today's Strava Insights, going through the data here in the car, I thought I'd share it right here, because I find it quite interesting. I've got the data from the Amy's Grand Fondo, which was held last weekend down in Lawn, Victoria. It's 125 kilometer, what's the Grand Fondo. I've got the data from that one, which is an NRS race, and also a Grand Fondo, obviously, for age group UCI qualifiers, for the, for the UCI Masters Worlds. Anyhow, I've got some stats here from both this year and last year. This year's interesting, last year's interesting, compare them together, very interesting. Let's have a look at the data. So first up, the amount of records that I have, this year I have 961 records, which was extracted on the night of the event running. So people who have uploaded pretty quickly, most people upload within 24 hours, or within a few hours anyway. So I've got most of them. 961 records from Amy's Grand Fondo, full 125 kilometers this year. Last year I have 1,132 records. Not sure that's indicative of how popular the event is. Hmm. Anyhow, onto the devices used. This is what it's all about. Garmin Edge 520. 24.6% usage for the Edge 520. That's massive, I've got to say. Just absolutely huge. Last year that was only 20%. I've done a direct comparison between the two. I'll pull up the table in a sec. We'll just run through this year's devices though. Coming in second, iPhone app, 20%. Edge 510. Edge 820 is moving up in popularity with coming in with 6% overall usage for this data set. Coming in at 5.3% and well below iPhone usage is the Strava and Android app. And the Edge Edge Air keeps going down until we see the Element Bolt and the Element itself. Last year the Bolt wasn't around, so this year we're seeing 1.9% uh, Bolt usage. So about 2% usage for a brand new device. That's not bad, it's on the rise up. Very interesting. Onto a few of the other statistics. Male and female participation between both years, almost identical. 16.6% female and 1.5% undefined. Last year was 81.7, 16.6 and 1.7 undefined. Very similar for male and female participation across both years. One interesting jump was power meter usage. Up from 17.49% last year to 23.52% this year. People are getting more serious or power meters are getting cheaper. But, uh, yeah, that's a quite a good rise in power meter usage. What we can also see is how hard the event was or how quickly people rode the event this year. Average power, last year 168.8 watts, this year 180.59 watts. So the power was up, and as such, so was the average speed. Average speed up from 26.36 to 27.54 this year. So a little bit higher speed and a little bit higher heart rate as well. 147 versus 149 average heart rate this year. That's condition dependent as well. So if there's a headwind on a certain section or a tailwind most of the way, but still pretty interesting. Country participation, Australia takes the cake last year, 92.7% uh, plus 4.5% undefined. Usually there'll be Aussies as well. Uh, the US had nine riders last year and the UK six. This year there was 11 from the US, about the same for Australia. So it's an Australian dominated event. And no surprises, Robbie McEwen takes the kudos win for this event as well. Robbie came in with 1.4% of the, all the kudoses of the sample set that I had. So Robbie McEwen, once again in retirement, still at the front of the bunch. Now back on the GPS devices or GPS head units people had, here is some, another look or another angle at the overall move up and down and the trends between two years. So 2016 saw 17% usage of the Edge 520. This year we saw 24.6%. That's a massive overall move of 7.6%. The Edge 820, which wasn't really that popular last year, slowly stepping up and stepping up. Uh, the Element Bolt obviously didn't exist last year, it's on the rise. The Element itself is still on the rise. Um, the rest sort of hover about the same. But I guess the most interesting thing here, apart from the 520 being absolute high up in the rankings and a dominant unit, is the demise of five very popular edge units. So the 1000, the 800, the 810, the 500 and 510 are all down in participation. So look, these things have a finite life. The batteries will degrade, I've seen this in a video and the tests that I've done, my Edge 800 battery slowly sort of went to about 50% of original usage capacity and I've replaced that battery. So I guess what else comes into play there is feature sets. So Bluetooth connectivity, auto uploads, um, Connect IQ features and things like that. So while this is not surprising at all, it's still very interesting to see the data itself right there coming out of a real event. So there are the stats there from the Grand Fondo, the 125 kilometer loop out of Lawn. I've also got the data from two other events held on that day. 
They had the Medio Fondo, Media Fondo? Medio Fondo is how that's pronounced. And I grabbed the similar stats from that as well, just from this here. We had 35% Strava iPhone app usage. Um, so I guess probably people just pulling their phones out, putting it in their pocket, not having a dedicated GPS. Those who did have a, have a dedicated GPS chose the Edge 520, then the 510, 820, 500, and the Android app as well comes in again way, way lower than the iPhone app. Interesting stats. We had more female participation in this event than any other event that I've actually extracted some data out of. So oh, just over 50% participation in that, 43% male and 5% undefined. That's cool. We also have 2.34% power meter usage. So these people are not using power meters on their bikes. Um, those who did, the average power was 105 watts. Heart rate monitor usage, 25%. Average heart rate, 147. So those who did have the heart rate monitors on and who entered this event, they were still working pretty hard. They were clipping along at 22.34 kilometers an hour average. So I'm guessing with this um, media fondo or medio fondo, a lot of people will go, husband and wife or couples, will go to this event and the serious cyclist of the two, either the husband or the wife, whoever, um, will do the large event and their partner will do the smaller event. I think that's what's happening here. Just a guess, I think that's what's going on. But having an option there for your partner to do another ride if they're not a serious cyclist, that's kind of cool. And it looks like they're doing the Medio Fondo for 45 kilometers. Australia again dominates the participation rate and uh, US and UK both had one representative in this data set from the Medio Fondo. The Piccolo Fondo or the Family Fondo, which was only six kilometers long, I tried to extract some data from that, but most people from the Grand Fondo used the same course as their warm-up, so there was a bit too much crossover there. I would have had to really pick that thing out and I wouldn't have got a good clean data set. So I'll skip that one over for now. They also had a Gravel Fondo though. So this is the third data point that I had from Amy's Grand Fondo weekend. Gravel Fondo out of Apollo Bay, so it wasn't out of lawn. 82 data points from this. Strava iPhone app absolutely dominated here, 18%. And again, the Edge 510, the older, the Edge 510, just nudged out the Edge 520. And again, the Strava Android app, well below the iPhone app. Not gonna draw any conclusions on this, but from the data set we see here, the iPhone is a lot more popular for people recording on their phones using the app. That's all I can conclude from that with this data set. Gender, we had 72% uh, male, we had 25% female, 2.4% 2 undefined. So good to see good women participation. They're usually on a, a serious cycling event or a, a more you know, longer event for cycling. We see probably 8% to 12% or 12% female participation. So the gravel fondo, 25% female participation. That was really good to see. Power meter usage, 6.1%. Average power, 163 watts. So off-road isn't any easier than on-road. 163 watts, that's, that's going pretty hard. Uh, for 65 kilometers. 36% usage for heart rate monitors, 142 beats, 18 kilometers an hour. Yes, they're off-road, it's a little slower. Mostly Australian there as well. So in wrap up there from across all events there at the Amy's Grand Fondo, the Strava iPhone app and the Edge 520, very, very popular. Not for everyone though, and people are choosing to go the alternatives. We saw the Element Bolt and the Element itself, which has been out for more than a year, slowly rise up those rankings. Really interesting to see the stats though compared to last year to see the extra increase in power, heart rates and speed for the overall one. And to see where that Medio Fondo sat in on the whole scheme of things, the gravel, the big event and the medium event here, that has a really good appeal to those who aren't that serious about going 125 k's on the bike. As always, all this data will be over on gplama.com. I will link to that. I've got a lot more data to talk about soon. Thanks for watching.